Hey, this is Ralph, and in this video, I want to create a favicon for my website. So my students in web dev, they have a little extra credit activity where I want them to create a little favicon and apply that to their web page. And of course, if you've never seen a favicon before, that's crazy. Of course, you've seen a favicon, you just may not have known that's what it is. But those little pictures that show up in the tabs, I'm using the Edge browser today, and I've got several web pages open, and you can see all but one of them has a cute little image inside of the tab. The only one that doesn't is mine. i got to fix that. So I want to create a favicon. Now, it's a pretty easy thing to do, especially if you use an online tool. So if I just go to Google and create a favicon, there it is. It's in my search history. I'm going to go to this one. It's the best favicon generator. You want to use the best one, definitely. So I'm going to click on the best favicon generator. And uh, give me some options. Ultimately, they need to make an ICO file, an icon file. And so basically, I could upload a ping image and they can create one. Oh, they can do one out of text. If you don't have a logo or image for your website and want to generate a favicon from scratch, then use this tool to generate your favicon. Oh, that sounds pretty neat. Or you can use an emoji. Um, I've done the uh, image one before. It's pretty easy. You just basically take your image file. It's best if it's a uh, square shape and uh, upload that. They'll convert it for you, and they'll even tell you the code you need to put into your, uh, into your web page in order to reference and display that. I'm going to try this text one, though. I haven't seen that before. Got a little ad. I'm going to close the ad. Okay. Now, <clears throat> actually, this is going to be a good one for my students because part of that extra credit is that they use their initials for their favicon. That way I can be sure that they're creating a new one, not just finding an image or an existing icon file. So for my text, I'm going to go ahead and put in RP, which are my initials. And um, for the font background color, okay, it's actually kind of nice shade of blue there. Tab away, see, is it, okay, it's working pretty dynamically. I'll change it to 70. See if I can get both my initials in there. All right, I kind of like that. Cool. Pretty happy with that. There's the download option. So let me click download. I'm going to do a save as. It's giving me a zip. I'll save it to my desktop. That seems fine. And I'm going to extract all. I'm going to get the files in this zip. See what we've got. There they are. Yeah, so this is my main web page folder. All right, feeling pretty good about that. And now, I'm just going to take, in fact, I'll take all of these, stick them right in there. Then I will need to publish them, of course, so I'm feeling pretty good about that. So I can close this one. I'm going to move this off to the side. Now let me head back over to those directions that they gave me. Next, copy the following link tags and paste them into the head of your HTML. Okay, well, let me go ahead and copy that. I'm going to open up VS Code. I'm going to get back into my page. And there it is right there. So let me go ahead and open this one up. Yes, I trust those. So here's my web page. And I'm just going to put in those link tags, like any other link tag. They're going to go in the head section. I'm going to paste those in. And let's indent those just so they all look kind of nice and neat. There we go. So I've got that part done. Now let's publish and see how this works. So I'm going to open up my FTP client, win SCP, demos, there we go. Now I'm in the right spot. And now I can see I've got all this stuff here. So there's my index page that I just edited by putting in those link tags. You can see that's October 8th, 922 AM. That's the current date and time. So I'm just going to drag that index over, basically updating my old one. Yeah, okay. And I'm just looking at the index that's on the server. Yep, October 8th, 9.22 a.m. Cool. I'm not sure what that little issue was. However, I do want to do this. Let me just sort by change date so I can see all the latest and greatest files. And I got a lot of files here from that favicon. So I just did a click, control, click to select all of my new favicon-related files. I'm going to drag all of those over. And those are going to go into my main website here. Oh, already contains a favicon. Yes, I will overwrite that. Okay, so now I've got a bunch of new files over there. So here's the real test. I go back to my browser, jump over here. Here's my page. Let me go backward up to my main web page. 
There it is. Okay, well, things are looking pretty boring. I got my favicon there. Let me do a hard refresh. Control F5 on my browser. And lo and behold, now I have a little favicon for my website. Now, the big question is, well, is that favicon going to show up everywhere? Well, let's find out. Let me go into a subfolder and I'll click on this page. And now I'm on a page that is within my website, but notice I've lost that favicon. So this means you're going to want to put these special link tags on the pages where you want that favicon to show up. So of course, a big website would put them on every web page and they would use basically a template so that those show up all the time. Um, but yeah, just go ahead and put it on your page. And for my students, you're just going to put it on that assignment page. So that way I'll notice that favicon when I'm looking at your particular assignment web page. Thanks for hanging out with me.